Well, welcome, Chris Godding, to Screen Careers. Thank you for spending time with us today. Now, you're very well known as a sound boom operator on a film set, but I wonder if you could explain to us what your role is. Uh, yeah, of course. My, um, my role is to report directly to the sound mixer, and my job on set is to get the microphone as close to the actor as possible so that as a department we can record the dialogue as cleanly as possible. Um, and that does have its difficulties every now and then. Um, so my job basically is on set. I have to operate the boom, get the boom in the right place uh, without casting any shadows, without um, interfering with any eye lines or move, getting people's way and standing in front of the camera, all sorts of different things I've got to think about. Um, I also have to attach radio microphones to the actors in the morning and tweak them throughout the day if they need tweaking or if the costumes change or whatever. Um, and yeah, those are two of the main responsibilities, but I also have to work alongside all the other departments as well and help them with anything they need, uh, anything of mine that, you know, if I've asked to switch a machine off and then it becomes in vision, then it has to obviously go back on. Um, I also have to um, sort of run the floor and I have to report to the first AD or whoever needs anything from the sound department. They'll come to me and then I'm a... I, I can report back to the sound recordist or I can give them an answer myself, depending on what the question is. Um, so yeah, that's the, the basic rules of what I do on set. And then, um, how did Chris Godding start in the sound department? Well, I'm taking you back to your school days, leaving school. What happened then? So I went to university in 2003, uh, graduated 2006 from Bournemouth and I started as an office runner. I uh, got I a job ask, up in. Can I just ask you what 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 degree were you following in in in, in university? So I did interactive media studies, and right. it wasn't strictly to do with television. Um, although we did share our course with a lot of TV students and journalist students, um, mine was more technical uh, websites and Photoshop and that kind of thing. Um, and coming out of university, I didn't, I wasn't able to get a job straight away in that field, um, but I was able to get a job as a runner um, through a contact I had, um, an office runner. So I was ordering stationery, making tea and coffee, sort of that's the, the very lowest of that sort of progression that you can start as. And then after that, I was lucky enough to have made some contacts and I sort of wrangled my way onto a job as a floor runner. Um, and then I did work with you eventually as a floor runner. Um, and I did, I was a floor runner for about two and a half years. I worked on a lot of Welsh dramas like Compassionate and A Priest. Uh, I worked as on Doctor Who as a runner in the David Tennant era. Wow. Um, and then I progressed to a third assistant director after I'd been doing running for a, th a few years. Um, <clears throat> and I only did that for about six months because I didn't really enjoy that as much. Um, and then I knew I wanted to do something technical as well. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a job as a sound trainee because I could have easily um, attempted to try and get a job in camera because that's also another technical role and it did interest me at the time. Um, but I am glad I went into sound and followed that path because I've had an amazing time doing it. Uh, and I'm a, I was a sound trainee uh, with a sound mixer called Gareth Miron Thomas. Yes. And he gave me a job on a show called Crash. Right. Uh, and that was quite a long job and I did learn a lot on that job about sound and how everything worked. And I think because of my background as an AD, I sort of knew how the floor was run anyway. And so that, that gave me a lot of, you know, information of um, how other departments worked anyway. So I sort of went in knowing sort of what everyone else did. So that made my job easier as a sound trainee. So I knew, you know, what other people were trying to do and how they're trying to achieve it. Mm. Um, and I sort of learned a lot about the sound department in, on that job. And from there, I made another contact, Dan Humphreys, um, later down the line. And um, he gave me sort of a second boom job, which is sort of not, it's a bit more advanced than a trainee, but it's not so, It's not the main boom operator job. And I sort of worked with Dan Humphreys on a job called Being Human. Um, and we did that in, in Barry. Strangely, and that poster behind my head, Chris. <laughs> that's, that's the one, yes, we, we worked together on that. Um, and that sort of led on and on and then I stayed with Dayan then. So Dayan is a sound mixer who I've worked with for about five or six years now. Yeah. And um, I've sort of been lucky enough to um, go on to most of his jobs and um, work with him. And he obviously did, he did Doctor Who, he's a sound recordist on Doctor Who and he took me with him on there. We was a, I was a second boom operator for a number of years and then I stepped up 
to being the main boom operator. Well, and uh, I've been doing that since. Well, I'm, and my next question to you is about basic skills within that department. But I, I would truly say that to spend time, working time um, on a freelance basis for a six year period with a sound recordist who we know very well and, and is a very good one at that. Um, but to keep, to sustain that and to keep that stamina up shows a great resilience that you have to be on top of your game, I'd imagine, uh, to be reemployed. Yeah. But that you need some great attributes to be a part of a team really as part of your skill set and um, i wonder if you could just divulge a little bit on that and just bring us into what other technical skills would you um, suggest for our audience who's listening in to think about um i think a lot of the things that i do on set which is quite important to what diane wants and obviously that's the first thing i've got to think of is what does diane want in this situation so if i'm if i'm doing a scene where someone's putting something down noisily i i need to be anticipating well you know that's not going to be great for what the mixer wants so i'll try and get in there and i'll try and isolate that and get rid of it before he's even asked me to do it so i think that's one thing is anticipation on what the person you're directly working for wants mm -hmm. so if you can keep them happy then you can keep yourself happy and in the job mm -hmm. um there's another a communication is another is another good thing to to keep to be aware of to um communicate your your thoughts and your um working um attributes to what you're trying to do with everyone i mean if i come onto a set and start demanding something for from someone and they don't know why I'm trying to do that and then it's not gonna it's not gonna play out well so I need to go in and ask nicely oh, is it okay just that bag of crisps that you're holding it's making a lot of noise would you mind changing it for a you know a plastic bag of some sort that doesn't make as much noise um, so I think communication is another good thing to to be aware of um, and just don't try not to make enemies obviously on set that's a, another important thing um, you don't want to bridges it feels to me that that's very much um, a set etiquette manner to do with each department, I'd imagine, across the set um, in, in many different ways. But if you were to give any kind of tips and advice for a new entrant trying to look for work in a sound department, um, you know, how, how important is set etiquette and, and where do you learn those things? I think set etiquette is the most important part of working on a set, on any set, and it doesn't matter where you are or who you're working with. If, if you've got good set etiquette, then you're halfway there already. Um, I think maybe that's one of the most useful skills I did learn as an AD, where you, you're, you know, you're a runner and you're working with every department. You sort of see how it all works. I think that's a good way to learn set etiquette and you just need to be aware of what everyone's trying to do because it's not one department versus another everyone's trying to work together to make the same the same show so it's a big team really and that's how you've got to think of it and if you're doing something that's you know making someone else's life hell then it's not going to work out so you want to just try and make everything good for everyone so it's just trying to do your job and let everyone do their job at the same time and then Chris, just touching very briefly on technical skills, you know, you've mentioned that you've come from very much starting in production, uh, a different department on the film set, which obviously has given you a, a great skill set to move towards the sound department. But should you not choose that pathway and you are choosing the, the pathway of being a trainee in the sound department and trying to progress within your department from, I believe, sound trainee to second boom to first boom and then possibly onwards to sound mixing if you have interest in becoming the HOD I'll touch upon that later with you but um, in regards of the, the technical skill set is, is there anything that you can actually give us as great advice today to our audience of something that they should really think about before becoming a sound trainee? Um, for, for me I didn't have any of the background that sound necessarily requires i know another boom up i work with often joe malone he's come from a music tech background and that's helped him a hell of a, hell of a lot in where he's gotten to and he's sort of he's very much more the technical side of sound and dan himself came from a post-production sound background and that's helped him massively so um studying something along the lines of that would definitely give you an advantage uh, in the later stages of the career in the sound department wonderful thank you for that chris and then I'm going to close this wonderful time I've had with you today. 
on Zoom, our new technical platform um, in our um, current challenging world. But what have been your career highlights? You know, what shows have you, I'd be really nice to hear what shows you've worked on and what are your future goals? Um, my career highlight, I've been lucky enough to work all around the world with different various various different programs like we went to Denmark together if you remember a few years ago um, I've also been to Italy recently on a six-month job um, for Sky uh, that was called Domina uh, I've done a lot of Doctor Who which has taken me through time and space and everywhere um, and that's yeah we've done a lot of trips abroad on on that show as well um, but my I think one of my highlights is going to South Africa for I was there for six months working on a show a documentary show um, called The Lion Man and that was just one of the best jobs I've ever done uh, and it was us going around filming animals in the wild and uh, yeah it was it was brilliant got to see a lot of really cool things it was hard work and then just before we touch on your future goal just let me just ask you that question because to gain work means you've got quite a big contact base of sound mixers or recorders that you can get in touch with to try and get work and also you might have other fellow boom operators that might be offered work and can't take the work on because they're working on other productions and you have their contact base and they have your contact uh, information for the first new entrant coming into the production um, into your world into the department it's a very difficult place to be are there any um diary service any crew um kind of um agents out there that deal with boom operators and can offer you pathways of of um contact details for our audience so, um it very much is I, I know it's a bit of a cliche but it's not what you know it's who you know that's i do think that's very true especially in our industry and i have been lucky enough with all my work you know as i touched on before i know this is sort of going off the subject a bit but working as a runner i, I met so many people i'd go on to my next job knowing at least a quarter of the crew anyway so you know you sort of if you work in the same areas you sort of do start to recognize faces and then you sort of like oh yeah, yeah i remember we worked together on can't remember what it was but um so i think that's another good thing is to maybe just remember people you work with um because you never know when they'll show up again and i have in the past had a job which has been based on my previous job so i think that's another a good way of um, keeping in contact with people mm. making you know making the links from one job going on to the next um, as to, in terms of finding someone if you don't have any contacts um, there are a lot of uh, places you can look there's that crew finder um uh, is, i think it's a book or an online book yep. um, and i have had that in the past to yep. look on that um but also you could you can have a, look, a lot of sound mixers have their own websites and you know you can you can see who's a sound mixer in your area you can google their name and if they've got a website they might have a contact address email address or a phone number and a lot of them will be willing to accept you know if you, if you say oh hi i'm looking for a trainee job i'm sure they wouldn't they wouldn't dismiss it straight away they'd at least read it so that's great advice and as you said even if they don't even know who those sound recordists are there's there's ways of finding out their names sometimes and if you go to a website called imdb which is a, an amazon kind of run website if you google I, imdb that comes up with cast and crew of each film and production and tv production <laughs> has ever been made throughout the world i'd imagine so that's a good place to start to get those names and then yeah things you can I, use, yeah, I, move forward to imdb is one of the ones that we use quite a lot if we're working with someone we haven't worked with before say it's a new director of photography or something or what you want to say oh what have they done awesome. and let's have a look so you look on imdb and you can see a list of everything they've done but well, it's such like a great the other way around. database of of our industry isn't it right across the world so yeah um, absolutely so to close this wonderful time with you chris and um, what's going to be your future goal are you um is that now now your career found as as a first um uh first boom up on set i am very happy doing what i do is it's really enjoyable job and i'm working with a really nice team at the moment so it's really um something i don't want to let go of <laughs> very soon or not in the short term anyway um the next progression in my um on, on my path it, as it was would be a sound recordist and a lot of people do do that jump up after a few years of being a boom operator um just because of the you know maybe they want a bit more responsibility or if they you know they want to do something different but i'm very happy doing what i do at the moment so well now Chris, I'm, I'm on that note i wish you well upon the next journey the next production and um, whatever that may be but thank you very much for spending your time and and giving us your wisdom and great advice today 
on um, the boom operator within the sound department and, and how to get to that position uh, from a trainee position as well. Chris, thank you. Chris, thank you very much, Lloyd. No worries.